a database will allow you to persist data in your applications. So in this video, I'll show you how to configure your Vapor application to integrate the database of your choice. So while you're choosing a database to run in your Vapor application, Vapor offers us with three options. SQLite, which is integrated by default in Vapor, MySQL and PostgreSQL. And there's another database, MongoDB, which is coming soon to Vapor. So there are three steps to configure a database in Vapor. Step one is to add a Fluent provider for that database's application services. Second is to configure the database and third is to configure the migrations. Now let's look at each type of database that Vapor provides integration with. So the first one is SQLite. Vapor offers SQLite as their default database. So, so when we compiled the project in our last video, the periodic table app, it had a default database of SQLite. It is a very simple to use database and uh, it is a file based database. So it relies on file logs to maintain database integrity. So it's not really suitable for a write intensive application and it can't be used across server, but it is considered a good database for testing and prototyping applications. So let's take a look at how SQLite was integrated in our project that we made in the last video, which was periodic table app. So the first step towards configuring a database, which was uh, to set up a fluent provider. So in our package.swift file, this is where SQLite was integrated using the Swift package manager. And when you go to configure.swift file, this is where the database configuration takes place. As you can see here, SQLite database is configured here. But here we have mentioned the storage as memory. So all of that data will not persist to our test. It will only stay in the memory. So what that means is when we terminate our app, all of that data will get deleted. So we have an option to change that to save it to a specific file. And this is where the database was configured. This is the database config object. And uh, we have added the SQLite database to it, which is represented by this dot SQLite. Thirdly, we had made the migration here. Here, as you can see, we have created a migration config object, which then registers our model and uses the SQLite database. So now let's take a look at MySQL database. MySQL is a very popular database due to its ease of use and uh, support for almost all of the cloud providers. So let's see how we can integrate MySQL database into our periodic tables app. So we'll be using Docker to manage our databases. You can go to docker.com slash get started and download the Docker desktop version. Docker is basically a containerization technology and it will allow you to run independent images on your machine without the overhead of uh, virtual machines. So you can spin up different databases and not worry about the installing dependencies or database interfering with each other. So once you have downloaded the Docker app and it's all set up, so once the Docker is running on your system, you need to type this command in the terminal. I'll add a document file with all the commands and codes used in this video in the video description so you guys don't have to type this again. So this container has been created. Now we can just check that our container is running using docker ps. So our MySQL container is running now. Now we can open our application again. So now in our package.swift file, we are going to replace this code, which was used to import SQLite database. Now it's using the Swift package manager to import the MySQL database here. I'll add the link to this code in the video description. So now that we have changed something in the package dependency, we'll need to recreate our code. So I'll just save and close the export file and regenerate our code again from the terminal using vapor xcode hyphen y. Great, now the dependencies have been updated. Now we can just go to configure.swift file to configure our database. Here we can change this import file to fluent MySQL. And we can change all of this code to configure the MySQL database. 
So here we have imported the Fluent MySQL library and we have set up the Fluent MySQL provider here. And we have configured our database as MySQL. And we have added the migrations to conform to the MySQL database. Now one last change that we have to make is in our periodic table model file. Here we can import Fluent MySQL. And in the extensions, we can add the MySQL model. Let's change the run scheme to my Mac and we can run the application. And one last thing that we need to do is we can change this database to MySQL database. So now you can check that the scheme is selected as run and it's running on my Mac and you can build and run the application. Okay, now here it shows that it's running on MySQL database. So now we can stop the server. So the last one on our list is PostgreSQL. So PostgreSQL is focused on extensibility and standards and uh, it's actually designed for enterprise use. And Vapor also recommends you to use Postgres as your database. So let us now configure our periodic table application to use the PostgreSQL database. So first I'll close this project. So let's open up terminal and we can run this command to start the PostgreSQL database. I'll link this command in the description of this video so you guys don't have to type this whole thing out. Okay, great. Now our database is running on this container. Now we can open our Xcode file. So keep the Xcode version whenever you get this prompt. Here we can change the package.swift file to import the PostgreSQL database. So I'll close the application. And we can open the project again using terminal so that the Swift package manager can take care of the dependencies. Now we can make some changes in our configure.swift file. So here we have imported the Fluent PostgreSQL and we have changed the database configuration and the migration. Now one final change in our periodic table model class. Okay, now we can try and run our application. So as you can see, Postgres SQL database is now running. So we can go ahead and stop our application. So in this video, we learned how to configure our SQLite, MySQL, and PostgreSQL databases. 
for our application. In the next video, I'll introduce CRUD operations so that we can create, retrieve, update, and delete new elements from the periodic table. Thank you guys for watching.